Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news show. I'm Nicole Capizzi. And I'm Molly Fox. Here's your weekly update. Go enjoy the Philadelphia Flower Show, the largest flower show in the world, running from March 2nd through the 10th. Student general admission is $20. Order your ticket online at visitphilly.com or at the Pennsylvania Convention Center box office. If you're going to be staying close to school for spring break, check out the Blue Man Group, which will be performing at the Kimmel Center on March 5th. This is a unique experience involving comedy and music. The performance is from 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. and tickets start at $25, so make sure you order your tickets online in advance. The fourth Be Beautiful fashion show was recently held by the college's Body Image Coalition. Let's check in with Bethany to hear more. Welcome to the fourth annual Body Image Coalition Beautiful Fashion Show. I'm Bethany Biggenhill on location for location. Let's check it out. I'm here to see all the confident people strut their stuff on stage and also a couple of my friends are in it. My friend Andrew is wearing onesies provided by me, like the footy pajamas. Um, and my friend Danton is also strutting his stuff in his little pajamas too. club through one of our friends and we decided to join because we just really like the cause that everybody should be able to believe that they are beautiful. We really want to spread a, a message of positive body image throughout the community and through to our fellow college students because college students are um, one of the biggest groups that are affected by eating disorders in the country so we want to make sure that we can try to help people feel good about themselves. Um, it was a lot of fun. Uh, it was a little awkward in the beginning because we didn't really know what we were doing, but we kind of just went with the flow and it turned out to be a lot of fun for us. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. Um, I really appreciate all the girls coming out in the little high school. Wait, what grade are they? Seven, the three, middle school seven. girls, seventh grade girls coming out. Really got a good chance to talk to them back, so it was a lot of fun. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. I'm Bethany Big and Ho, on location for location. Now back to the news desk. That was your trip around the block. So Kevin, what's the weekly update on sports? Well, it was championship weekend for basketball and the results were good for Cabrini once again. Let's take a look. It was a clean sweep for Cavalier basketball in the CSAC finals. The men's team won their fourth straight CSAC title with a 90-74 win over Keystone College on Friday. Junior Fran Rafferty was named the game's MVP, scoring 19 points and grabbing 10 rebounds. The Cavs will travel to face Hampton Sydney College in the first round of the NCAA tournament on Saturday at 7 p.m. The Lady Cavs finished off an undefeated season in the CSEC by claiming their first conference title since 2009 with a 49-38 win over Gwen and Mercy College on Saturday. Junior Annie Rivetuso was named the game's MVP with 11 points and 9 rebounds. The Lady Cavs traveled to face Catholic University on Friday in the first round of the NCAA tournament at 7.30 p.m. The men's lacrosse team kicked off their season with an 18-12 win over Haverford College on Saturday. Junior Corey Elmer and sophomore Mike Lydon each scored four goals in the win. The fifth-ranked Cavs faced number seven Dickinson College on Wednesday and number three Lynchburg College on Saturday. The Flyers' struggle to return to 500 continued on Monday as they fell to the Toronto Maple Leafs by a score of 4-2. to two. Scott Hartnell and Jake Voracek scored the Flyers' goals in the loss. The Flyers close out a five-game homestand with games against the Washington Capitals on Wednesday and the Ottawa Senators on Saturday. The Sixers' midseason woes continued as they dropped their sixth game in a row with a 98-84 loss to the Orlando Magic on Tuesday. The 22-33 Sixers face the Chicago Bulls on Thursday and have weekend matchups against the Golden State Warriors and Washington Wizards over the weekend. Check back with location after spring break for updates on the Cavs' progress in the NCAA tournament as well as updates on Philly sports. That was your sports update. Now here's Molly with your trip across the nation. 
The Daytona 500 took place as scheduled last week despite a jaw-dropping crash a day earlier that flung debris onto the stands at the Daytona International Speedway. At least 28 fans were injured as more than a dozen cars piled up on the final curve of the racetrack. According to Joe Chitwood, president of the racetrack, some of the fans who were sitting in that area were back on Sunday to see the race. Chitwood said they made good accommodations for them so they could enjoy the event. Police have identified a suspect in a fatal shooting and crash on the Las Vegas Strip that left three people dead. The 26-year-old suspect, Amar Harris, was identified in a press release by the Las Vegas Police Department. Police explain that Harris is armed and dangerous and has a violent criminal history. Kenneth Cherry, an aspiring rapper known as Kenny Clutch, was driving his Maserati around 4.20 a.m. Thursday when someone in a Range Rover shot at his car. Cherry, who was shot in the chest and arm, died later at a nearby hospital. In the midst of gun control turmoil, a two-year-old boy shot himself in the head late Thursday night at his home in Fayette, Pennsylvania. Investigators say Owen Moore was rushed to the Children's Hospital and is in critical but stable condition. Police said the boy accidentally shot himself after finding a gun owned by his stepfather in his mother's purse. According to police, charges are not being filed and the shooting was an accident. Thinking about what the job market is like for jobs in your field, let's hear what faculty had to say about job markets in different fields and how it relates to different majors. Job Outlook 2013 survey shows that employers anticipate hiring 13% more class of 2013 college graduates than they hired from the class of 2012. Within the business department, we have five majors. We have a business administration major, an accounting major, finance major, human resource management major, and a marketing major. So. Um, you know, probably the largest number of students that are in this department belong in the business administration major, um, but we have good representation then with the others as well. Well, there's so there are three majors out of the history and political science department. We have uh, history, um, political science, and we also have American studies. And as is the case with most majors, there's um, the job market is, is somewhat tough. Uh, what we found is many of our recent graduates, meaning over the past, I'd say, two to three years, have been working in, um, uh, in fields that aren't necessarily tied, directly tied to um, their degree. But... Uh, we offer an array of services, uh, including resume writing, we offer cover letter critiquing, we offer practice interviews, mock interviews, we offer any sort of conversation about picking a major, um, especially for freshmen or for sophomores who are a little confused. Uh, we offer co-ops. Um, if you're not familiar with a co-op program, that's an internship where you receive academic credit. Um, and so that's a really good way to kind of try out uh, a major or try out a career. Um, education majors here at Cabrini um, usually pick a certification area, so they, they look at what grade level they really would like to teach at. Um, and their choices are pre-K to four, they can also look at middle level students or high school students. And a lot of that really is based upon the age level that they're attracted to. Um, and for high school students, many times it's the discipline that they're attracted to, whether that be a subject matter like biology or math. Most of those students go out into the job market and are either teaching in a private school setting or they um, go, go in and spend a year or so as a part-time or full-time substitute before they enter into a full-time job market. Um, in choosing where they would like to teach or what grade level, a lot of it is based upon opportunity. So in this particular area, if there are not a lot of job opportunities, they may choose to look into areas like Philadelphia School District where there's more opportunities for jobs. So many times our graduates will move to where there might be a market for teachers, not necessarily where they would choose to live. Uh, the job search is a little overwhelming, um, and I would say that if you can get inside of career services and get some advice on how best to approach the job search, then you'll be better off. Get an internship, get a co-op, have as many experiences as you can. That will make you more marketable. I think networking is very important, so that means career fairs as well. Um, you know, you, you must you promote yourself in the same way that you would promote a product. And so in order to do that, you really need to get out there. 
That was your trip across the nation. So Christine, what's going on with entertainment this week? Well, this past Sunday was the Oscars, so let me tell you more about it. The 2013 Academy Awards ceremony took place on Sunday, February 24th at the Dolby Theater in Los Angeles. Family Guy creator and director of the film Ted, Seth MacFarlane, hosted the ceremony. First Lady Michelle Obama made a surprise appearance at the Oscars, announcing the winner for Best Picture. Argo took this year's Golden Man for Best Picture, produced and directed by Ben Affleck. One of my favorite Hollywood actresses, Anne Hathaway, won Supporting Actress for the movie Les Mis, and Christoph Waltz received Supporting Actor for Django Unchained. The Slave Revenge Western also won Original Screenplay for Quentin Tarantino. Undoubtedly, the highlight of the Oscars was Jennifer Lawrence falling up the stairs as she went to collect her award for Best Actress in the moving, movie Silver Linings Playbook. I'm sure her nerves were high, and winning an Oscar is a pretty good reason to have a few glasses of wine, but was Lawrence drunk? According to the actress herself, in a press conference after the ceremony, the actress was stumbling over her words due to a shot she just took a few minutes prior to the conference. Personally, I'm glad that Lawrence won the Oscar, if only for the selfish reason that she virtually guarantees that she'll be around Hollywood for a long time to come. Her wit and personality continues to amaze me, and she's a fantastic role model for body confidence. Win-win for society. That was your entertainment update. Now here's your Nicole for your trip around the world. Scandal is threatening the poignancy of Pope Benedict XVI's historic final days as Pope. Vatican officials were already trying Monday to swat down unsavory claims by Italian publications of a brewing episode involving gay priests, male prostitutes, and blackmail. But the scandals, along with lingering questions about how the Church has handled claims of abuse by Catholic priests around the world, have dimmed the spotlight on Benedict's final days as Pope. The only thing certain about the results of the Italian elections held February 24th and 25th is that the country is headed for a new phase of utter and chaotic uncertainty. The parliamentary elections in Italy failed to produce a clear winner and gave an opening for former Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi to take part in a new coalition government. While there may be clear winners in terms of ballot counts, there is no clear majority in the powerful Senate, which means that no one has a clear enough mandate to actually govern the country. In short, Italy is right back where it was in November 2011 when the Prime Minister resigned amid a flurry of sex and financial corruption scandals. But is that back to square one? That would be an optimistic outcome. Our very own Generos de Giacomo sat down and talked with Father Carl, Sister Christine, and Maria Stodmuller about their trip to Israel. Welcome to another episode of Bless Your Heart with Generos de Giacomo. I am Generos de Giacomo. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking to Father Carl, Sister Christine, and Maria Stratmuller about their pilgrimage to the Holy Land, Israel. Let's take a look, shall we? So the college announced that it was going to do an initiative this year for global education. So campus ministry tries to support the initiative of the college with a spiritual uh, program. So Maria, my dear, you were one of the 25 students and faculty that went on this trip. What was your favorite part about going? once in a lifetime thing yeah. so when else am I gonna go and walk on the same steps that Jesus did so now sister my love how are you today I'm just marvelous oh, I couldn't be better having a wonderful day well see this was on my bucket list when I hear the Gospels read the scriptures read I hear stories about Jesus some of them just come so alive because we were at so many of the places that were important in his life. What was your favorite part or most memorable moment, if I might say so myself? Being in the different spots and hearing the scripture prayers and the prayers that we were saying for the different services. Every, every day we had mass and each mass was at like a specific place that was important in the Bible. Three, three nights we were in Nazareth and then two nights in Bethlehem and then two nights in Jerusalem. It's a dream of a lifetime that came true. Did you bring any 
trinkets home with you? Anything valuable? Yeah, and Father Carl bought the campus ministry and the school nativities. Oh, I can't thank you all enough again. This has been yet another episode of Bless Your Heart with Jenna Rose Giacomo. I am Jenna Rose DiGiacomo, and there were quite a lot of blessings going around the table today as I talked with the lovely Father Carl, my new best friend, Sister Christine, and my love of my life, Maria Stratmuller. Well, Cabrini, I'll see you in two weeks. Bless your heart. Thanks for catching up with us. For Location Weekly News, I'm Nicole Capizzi. And I'm Molly Fox. Be sure to stay updated with us this week through our social media sites. Simply search Location News. Have a great week, Cabrini.